Hi, spooky friends. Today, I will be sharing with you all of the books that I want to read in the cozy months of autumn. Hello, spooky friends. <laughs> you guys, it's finally fall. I'm trying really hard to like dance enthusiastically while also not spilling this coffee because it is piping hot. Hello, spooky friends, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lexi. I am so excited that you are here today because today marks one of my favorite times of year, which is the start of fall. Technically, I know it doesn't start until later in September, but like, listen, as soon as September 1st hits, it's fall up in this house, okay? Today, I'm going to be sharing with you 15 titles that I would like to read in the upcoming cozy months. But before we get started, I would like to take a couple of seconds to tell you about today's sponsor, Book of the Month. This video is being sponsored by Book of the Month. And they say I wasn't coordinated in high school, <laughs> okay. Book of the Month is a growing online book subscription service and every single month their team actually vets hundreds of different books to create a carefully selected book selection for you to choose from at home. Every single month you can choose which book or books you would like to be delivered to your door and then once a month you actually get all of your selection right to you. It's extremely convenient and so much fun. They also have a very wide range of books so if you are a person who loves literary fiction, thrillers, horror, nonfiction, romance books, they've totally got you covered. There's also absolutely no risk involved because if you are not vibing with the selection, you can either do one of two things. Number one, you can decide you would like to skip the month with absolutely no penalty and you're not charged, or you can go ahead and actually choose from their selected backlist titles and they always have so many wonderful books in their selected backlist titles. The range is phenomenal, like we love to see it. So let me go ahead and show you the two books that I chose for the month. Look at this iconic blue box. Like you just love to see it, you know? So the first book here is called Kill of a certain age, and this is by Deanna Rayborn. It says, it's kill or be killed, but they've been at this a long time. Like, look at this. This is stunning. So we're following a group of women who decide to take a vacation and while they are out on vacation, one of the people from their like assassination organization tries to kill them and they decide uh, that they're not gonna take it, obviously. You know with the vibes of this book? It's really giving me red. Have you seen that movie? It's like one of my very favorite movies, Red One and Red Two. It's amazing. If you liked those, you might wanna check this out. This feels perfect for the fall. I think it's gonna be really funny, action packed, and also I'm getting big bestie vibes from this and we like, we love to see it, you know? And then the next one is by Sarah Addison Allen, and this is Other Birds. So this is actually the author who wrote, I think, Garden of Spells, which I haven't read, but I've heard really, really excellent things about, and I've wanted to read one of her books for years. I'm gonna go ahead and read the uh, synopsis for this one because it's kind of complicated and hard to describe. It says, down a narrow alley in a small coastal town of Mallow Island lives a stunning cobblestone building comprised of five apartments. When Zoe comes to claim her deceased mother's apartment, she meets her quirky, enigmatic neighbors, including a girl on the run, a grieving chef, two estranged middle-aged sisters, and three ghosts. So we're kind of following her in this mysterious town with these mysterious new people. I'm really, really excited to kind of see what Sarah Addison Allen does. I've just heard that her writing is really, really magical, and I especially love the aspect of her meeting these ghosts. I think it's gonna be really, really fun. And if you would like to sign up for Book of the Month, you can actually get your very first book box for only $9.99 when you use my code, which is Alexandra. I highly, highly recommend them, and all of the links will be down below in the description. If you love books, which you're here, so I'm assuming you love books, but if you love books, I highly recommend checking them out. I love their service so much. So once again, thank you so much, Book of the Month, not only for sponsoring this video, but for adding joy to all of our lives. And with that, let's go ahead and get back to the cozy autumn list. So the way I've been doing TBRs this year is by season. So I've done a spring one, I've done a summer one. The one exception to this though is fall because this fall I'm going to be coming out with two different lists. The first one is my cozy fall TBR, which is what you're watching now. So the list today is going to be primarily books that feel warm and cozy like comfort reads, fantasy based or cozy mysteries. Um, but the spooky factor is going to be on a second list that will be like released in October and that's gonna be all of the scary spooky 
spooky thriller type books that I want to read in the upcoming months. So this list is very long because this is going to be a list that stretches from now all the way through November. Mm. Oh my God, that tastes, even the coffee tastes better in fall. Amazing. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the cozy list. Okay, so I get overly ambitious in the fall and I just wanna do every single thing possible for like themed reading vlogs. One of them that I would love to do is a cozy mystery reading vlog because I feel like that would be like perfect for the cozy fall months. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of the titles that I would like to read specifically for that vlog, but also just in general. The first one is Shady Hollow and this is by Juno Black. So this book sounds literally perfect for the autumn time or following a fox named Vera. And Vera suspects that like a local death in her specific cozy little town is actually a murder. And so she tries to find out what happens, but the closer she gets to solving this case, the more in danger and at risk she is. It sounds like a perfect cozy mystery. I love foxes. So I just feel like this is going to be the perfect cozy mystery for Autumn. Next up is a book that I debated not putting on. And here's why. I put this on my last two years worth of TBRs on different fall videos and I have not gotten around to it, but this is the year you guys, this is the year that I'm actually going to read this. It has to happen and I'm really excited about it. And that is The Scandalous Sisterhood of Prick Willow Place. And this is by Julie Berry. This is a middle grade and it kind of is giving me like dark academia vibes. This book is about a group of girls who are all at a boarding school and their headmistress randomly falls down dead, I think at breakfast and she has been poisoned. And the girls don't want to get the police involved because then they're all going to have to go back home. And so they decide that they want to solve this case themselves. It sounds kind of like it has dark academia vibes along with these cozy mystery vibes. I think it's gonna be really, really cute and charming. I first heard about this from Darling Desi and I just, I think this is gonna be really, really good. So I can't wait to read it. It's gonna happen. This is the year I'm finally gonna read this book. And then the next book is a book that I actually found while browsing Barnes and Noble, but since picking it up, I've actually heard it on quite a few different lists. So I feel way more confident about it. And that is In the Company of Witches. And this is by Ara Lee Wallace. And look at how freaking cute this is. Also, a word about witches. I actually have quite a few witchy books that I really, really wanna read. But again, I'm saving the majority of those titles for my October spooky TBR, um, but this one is on this list because it's a cozy mystery. I'm gonna go ahead and read the back. It says, for 400 years, the Warren witches have used their magic to quietly help the citizens of the sleepy New England town of Evan Fall thrive. There's never been a problem they couldn't handle. Then Constance Graves dies while staying at the witch's bed and breakfast. At first it seems like an accident, but soon it becomes clear that there's something more sinister at work and Aunt Nora is shaping up to be the prime suspect. This has so many things that just like scream to me perfect for the fall. First of all, you guys know how obsessed I am with New England. This takes place in New England, okay? We've already got a winner. I'm very excited. But plus, I love the idea that this murder mystery happened at this cozy witch's inn. I mean, you know there's gonna be like food. You know there's gonna be like pastries. You know there's gonna be cozy little stories and nooks and crannies in this cute little inn. It just, it sounds really cute. Okay, next up is a book that was a present from one of my friends, Soleil. I'm gonna go ahead and link her channel down below. She also does book two videos and I love her so much. She got this for me last year for my birthday, which was so incredibly kind. And it's called Before the Coffee Gets Cold and this is by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is a book that has been circling the rounds of booktube, book talk, and also bookstagram, all of the socials for a while because it's apparently very, very sweet and it also is very, very touching. It's about a magical little coffee shop where you can actually go back in time, but you have to come back before your coffee gets cold. That's kind of all I know though. I've heard so many wonderful things about this book. I've heard that this is a very, very emotional read and that it's very, very cozy. I believe this is a trans Translated work as well. And I'm just really, really excited to read this. Next up is a book that's a little bit spooky. I almost put it on my spooky list, but I think it's kind of giving me cozy vibes as well. And that is Anatomy, A Love Story. And this is by Dana Schwartz. This is a YA book. And this is a little bit of like a Gothic book. This book takes place in Edinburgh at a time when women could not be doctors. And Hazel is determined to become a surgeon. However, she's kind of kicked out of this class because she's a girl and the professor 
professor basically tells her, if you can somehow pass my class without being in this class, I will let you study under me, under my guidance. And so she does the only logical thing, which is to go to graveyards and start digging up bodies to experiment on. You know, the more I'm talking about it, the more I'm saying this is a little creepy and spooky, uh, but I still think it has the coziness vibes because we've got Edinburgh, we've got some cemetery action, which is a little cozy, question mark? Okay, it's mostly spooky. I think there's supposed to be a little bit of like a love story in this as well with Jack who is helping Hazel dig up these bodies and I think they discover something more sinister is at play. So I'm excited to read this. I think it'll be great. I love a little spooky YA action in the cozy months of autumn. Next is a book that I don't have in front of me. It's on order here. It wasn't at my local bookstore and it's called The Society for Soulless Girls and this is by Laura Steven. This sounds so perfect for autumn because it seems kind of like it has some dark academia vibes to it, which to me, nothing feels more cozy than like dark academia vibes. So this particular book is YA and it says, it is a dark and funny YA thriller with a supernatural twist from the winner of the Comedy Women in Print Prize. That's amazing. So it's probably gonna be funny too. It says 10 years ago, four students lost their lives in the infamous North Tower murders at the elite Carvel College of Arts, forcing Carvel to close its doors. Now Carvel, is reopening, the fearless student Lottie is determined to find out what really happened. But when her roommate Alice stumbles upon a sinister soul-splitting ritual hidden in the haunted library, that's what got me, you guys. I was reading the synopsis and I was like, there's a freaking haunted library? Are you joking me? Anyways, um, in their haunted library, the North Tower claims another victim. Okay, so basically we are dealing with a haunted library. We're dealing with a dark academia boarding school. We're dealing with murders and death and possibly possibly some supernatural stuff. I am so into this, like I cannot even tell you. This is probably like my number one book that I wanna read going into autumn. Next up, it would not be a cozy autumn TBR without a little mention of fantasy. I love fantasy in the colder months, especially like closer to winter time. It's all I wanna read is fantasy for the end of the year. And one of the very first books that I wanna read in the fantasy genre, is A Far Wilder Magic, and this is by Allison Saft. I picked this up as soon as it released. I actually heard about this from my friend Allie, but I think I've actually been saving it for the fall. I think that this is going to be perfect for the fall months. So this book is following Margaret and Weston, and they team up to go on this magical hunt, but I don't think the animal gets hurt. But anyways, one of them is really, really good at shooting, and the other one is an alchemist, and they kind of, I think, end up falling in love on this hunt. It sounds really, really cozy, and charming. Also the cover though, it is giving, is it not? So the next book is going to be a graphic novel. Every single year I love reading graphic novels in the fall time and the reason is because I feel like graphic novels that are set specifically in fall can immerse you almost unlike anything else. The illustrations mixed with the spooky stories, they just are like a whole other level of coziness. So this year, the graphic novel that I would like to read is called Fly By Night, and this is by Tara O'Connell. This particular graphic novel is about a girl named Dee, and Dee is going back to her hometown to search for, I guess, clues for her missing twin. But while she is there, she is warned that there are monsters in the woods, but the monsters are not the things that she should be afraid of. I also was a huge, huge fan of the artwork. Let me see if I can show you a couple. I felt like it was so beautiful while I was flipping through this. Let me see if I can find like a more autumnal one too. Like look at that, that just looks like autumn, you know? I'm really, really excited. I love a good monster story. Most of my monster stories, again, I'm saving, but this one, it felt right for the cozy TBR. Next up, we have an anthology. I love reading anthologies in different seasons. I don't know why. I feel like when you read them, they can almost feel like bedtime stories. And this is one that I actually just started this week. I'm already flying through it and I already love it. And it's called Dreadful Young Ladies and Other Stories by Kelly Barnhill. I believe that this particular anthology is adult, but Kelly Barnhill is actually the author who wrote The Girl Who Drank the Moon. So if you loved the writing style of that, you'll probably love this. I've only read two stories in here and one of them is now one of my all-time favorite books of all time, or like stories of all time. It's about a ghost, it's wonderful. But these are just different 
stories with like bits of magic and bits of fantasy. I don't think I would call it magical realism and I don't think I would call it fantasy. It's kind of a blend between like everyday whimsy and some more magical elements. And it's just very, very good and very, very unique. And I'm really, really, really enjoying it. But also like this just screams fall to me, the cover does. Next up is a book that I'm sure is going to be on so many different people's TBR for the year. And that is Babel by RF Kuang. You guys. <laughs> I have wanted to read this book since it was first announced that RF Kuang was working on this book like two, two and a half years ago. I have been counting down the days. I am so obsessed with Dark Academia and this just sounds so freaking good. Like I cannot even tell you. So it's Dark Academia, it has a diverse cast and also RF Kuang has said that she actually wrote this while she was getting, I think her master's at Oxford. Am I getting that right? Yeah, I just think that makes it even more cool. So it says here on the back, 1828, Robin Swift, orphaned by cholera in Canton, is brought to London by the mysterious Professor Lovell. There, Robin trains for years in Latin, ancient Greek, and Chinese, all in preparation for the day. He'll enroll in Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel. The tower and its students are the world center for translation and more importantly, magic. Silver working the art of manifesting the meaning lost in translation using enchanted silver brass has made the British unparalleled in power and the craft serves the empire's quest for colonization. So this sounds like dark academia, but it sounds like it's actually gonna be touching on a lot of deeper themes and meanings, which I like love in books so much. Um, so now it says, so for Robin, Oxford is a utopia dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge, but knowledge obeys power. And as a Chinese boy raised in Britain, he realizes serving Babel means betraying his motherland. I think he kind of has to try to choose like, does he want to defend his motherland or is he just blindly going to be accepting everything from his professors? It just, it sounds great because it sounds like it has so many layers. Not only does it sound like it's going to be like a fantastic fantasy, it also sounds like it's going to be dealing with a lot of really, really important topics. And I just, I cannot wait to read this. Like you have no idea. Okay, so we've got one last stack and I think that's going to round out all of the cozy books that I wanna read in the upcoming months. The very first book is a book that I've actually mentioned on a couple different TBRs. I think just my summer one actually. And I wanted to read it for summer, but I didn't get to. So now it's going to be my sad girl autumn read and that is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otesha Moshfeg. This is adult and this is literary fiction. And I have started it. I'm on page... I'm on page 63 and I'm really, really excited to be reading this because it is so good so far. We're following our main protagonist and she has lost her two parents in succession and she's just very, very sad and she wants to feel nothing. She just wants to sleep away her days. She kind of wants to go into hibernation for one year and that way when she wakes up, all of her grief will be like slept off sort of. And it's a conversation about mental health. It's a conversation about depression, about how you heal from grief. And so far, I really, really enjoy it. If you like unlikable protagonists and you like books that kind of really dive into like mental health, I think you might enjoy this because so far I'm really, really liking it. Next up is a book that I think I think, again, I said I wanted to read last year. I definitely want to read it this year, and that is All's Well by Mona Awad. And this is an adult literary fiction, and I believe it has like some speculative elements in it as well. So this particular book is following Miranda, and Miranda is a professor who I believe is a professor in like the arts, and she puts on different Shakespeare plays where she works or like at her university. And she's also a person who struggles with chronic illness. So I think that she was in an accident and it's left her with a lot of of really horrible pain, but I don't think people believe that she's in pain. I think that people think that she's making it up almost for attention and her students aren't listening to her. And I believe that she is helped by a mysterious benefactor or two and things go from there. So I don't know a lot. This is the author who wrote Bunny. I just like loved Bunny so much and I'm so excited to kind of see what she does with this particular story. I think it'll be great. I love a dark academia book, um, but I also have heard that the conversations around Miranda and her chronic illness are really, really important. So I'm really excited to see how Mona Awad handles that as well. Okay, next up, this is I think the fourth book in the series. I'm just holding it up because I don't know where my first book copy is but 
In the next upcoming months, I would like to try to read a series of unfortunate events. Believe it or not, I've never read these books. I think like I read maybe one book when I was younger. And here's the thing. I was so upset that basically it said in the very beginning that the series doesn't end happy, that I refuse to read it on principle. I was very sassy growing up and I was like, if he's not gonna give me a happy ending, why am I gonna read it? And I think I read the first book and I was like, there's no happy ending. And I was really mad. So I never read it. However, adult me loves the concept of it so much and I really, really wanna go back and revisit it. So I would like to read this series. This is a middle grade series. It has like some gothic elements. We're following three orphans, the Baudelaire children, and their family tragically dies in a fire. And now they basically, the first one, not this one, they have to move in with Count Olaf, who is like a distant relative. But Count Olaf just wants their enormous fortune. And the series itself is basically following how this count is trying to get the money from these orphans by them, you know? Next up is a book that I really have been wanting to read for months, but I really wanted to hold off and read it in the fall, and that is Hotel Magnifique, and this is by Emily J. Taylor. This is about a hotel that is magical, and it can reappear in different cities, and I guess it's like enchanted, so when you stay there, is magical, that's all I know. And we're following two siblings who are trying to get jobs at this Hotel Magnifique. And then we are following their adventures with the hotel. I think it's gonna be fantastic. I started to read this over the summer and then once again, like I stopped cause I was like, I really wanna read this in the fall. So far what I had read was so beautiful and like lush and the world felt so real and magical. So I'm really, really excited to read this. I think it'll be great to read this fall. And yeah, that's, that's that book. It's also YA by the way. And then finally, the very last book that I have here is by Hiroko Murakami and it is Norwegian Wood. I've wanted to read a Murakami for years. I think this is just like the time to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the back for this. It says, Turo, a serious young college student in Tokyo is devoted to Naoko, a beautiful and introspective young woman, but their mutual passion is marked by the tragic death of their best friend years before. As Naoko retreats further into her own world, Turo finds himself drawn to a fiercely independent and sexually liberated young woman. So I think it's a little bit of like a coming of age story. Um, I've heard that this is beautiful. I really have wanted to read Haruko Murakami for years. And I feel like this kind of seems autumnal. So I'm excited to dive into it. And you guys, I think that is it for all of the books I wanna read on my cozy TBR. I would love to know from you guys though, what books do you wanna read this upcoming fall season? Do you already have books in mind? And if you have made it to this point, please leave me any of the fall leave emojis because it's finally time, you guys. It's finally time to bring out the fall emojis. Okay, and once again, a huge, huge thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. I highly recommend checking them out. I love Book of the Month so much. If you are looking for your next read, please check them out down below. And again, you can use my code. And I think that is it. So thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so very much. And until next time, my spooky friends, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Stay spooky.